everybody. I'm Marcus Avery, and I want to welcome you back to another episode of Chow and Company. And joining us today is the owner of The Walnut Tree. So let's give a warm welcome to Kiana Johnson. Welcome, Kiana. Welcome, welcome. Thank you. Yes, happy to have you on. Um, so just for like background, um, I just wanted to let everybody know I had the uh, distinct opportunity to uh, partner with Kiana um, a few months ago and um, help promote her product. And I was happy to, to try it again. I had, uh, well, I had walnut meat once before, but this one was different because um, it came in, what, two flavors she provided me with, uh, the spicy Tex- Tex-Mex and the, uh, the Italian walnut meat. And both were really, really good and had their own distinct flavor to them. So I was able to make, you know, tacos and pasta. And, um, you know, the reels are actually on my social media on um, Instagram in particular. So feel free to go take a look at those. And they're on her page as well. But certainly when I heard about the product and certainly after tasting, I was like, okay, I have to have Kiana on the show. And so here we are. So again, welcome, Kiana. But before we even jump into jump into like the background of the walnut tree let's get to know a little more about you so tell us more about yourself like where are you from like give us the whole background okay well i was born and raised in washington dc i'm a native washingtonian third generation um i was educated here i work here i still live here and um yeah i guess that's that's about it i'm I'm a dc girl okay all right we for that dc (laughs) okay (laughs) (laughs) so let's talk about so what did you do like before starting the walnut tree like what was life like for kiana um when i started the walnut tree i had just been fired from my full-time job i was let go um and i had a part-time job so both jobs i was working as a technical writer so Mm -hmm. in between the full-time and the part-time losing the full-time contract i was like you know something has got to give um, and I fasted and prayed for two days. Um, after coming okay. out of the fasting and praying, my condo was like 92 degrees in here. So I may have been a bit delusional. It was really, really hot in here. And I remember sitting on the sofa, literally naked. It was so hot in here. Yeah, boy. And I was like, man, I really want some tacos. Now, I don't know why after fasting and praying, I was craving tacos. I've been plant-based for five years and I wanted this certain texture of like ground meat. It was just so clear. And I was like, you know what? I'm gonna try walnut meat. I'm gonna try to make it. I've seen people make it. I don't like walnuts, but I think I can do it. And I did it and my personality can be a little bit obsessive and I ate it every day, all day for like a month. And after my family tried it and liked it that's when i was like i think i think other people may like this as well so yeah oh nice nice so are you on like the whole the tabitha brown train train of things i know uh originally um like first heard or first tasted walnut meat based mm-hmm. on like one of her recipes and this was like before she even became like the tabitha brown we know today like uh-huh. i've been following her for like years and so um and i tasted it then so it's how like what even made you think again walnuts in particular <laughs> Yeah, because walnuts are like my least favorite nut. I did not eat them before making walnut meat. So I, there was this product um, way before COVID. Like I found out about it like before I even went plant-based. They used to have a ready-made taco. They mixed walnuts mm-hmm. with rice and all this other stuff. Mm-hmm. And I liked it. And I was like, this is cool. You know, and when COVID came, I reached out to them like, you know, I haven't seen your product on the shelf. What's going on? And they were like, well, we're coming back. We're coming back. Lo and behold, they never came back. I think the business dissolved. And that's how I, that was my first introduction into walnut meat. But it wasn't like the one that I made. I just made it based on, you know, what I think I would like. But that was my first introduction. So. Yeah. So yours just had that, has that extra little oomph to it. So. <laughs> yeah, it, I wanted it clean. Like I wanted yeah. like people to use it in any way they want it without other rice and carrots and all that stuff in it. So. So, Okay had the vision in mind and now mm-hmm. marry that with entrepreneurship because that's a whole nother beast in and of oh, itself. Gosh. So <laughs> what made you take that concept? <laughs> what made I, you take that concept? A rapper or entertainer that likes to entertain but does not like the business aspect of it. I mean, the entrepreneur part has been a learning curve. The cooking and developing recipes has been the fun part. 
I think mm -hmm. for me, I came up with the idea of making it a business, honestly, because I've been married my two favorite things. I love feeding people and I love health and wellness. And when I mm -hmm. went to the store to find plant-based ground meat alternatives, there, none of them fit my standards in terms of health. Um, transitional foods are cool for a few weeks, a few months even, but I start thinking long-term. What if I ate this particular product three times a week for five years? What would my body feel like? What would I look like? So that's when I was like, you know, there are other people that would like it. Because I know my sister, there's a particular product on the market. I won't say its name. I cooked it. She came into the house and she was like, I'm not eating that. Whatever that is, give me the animal. I'm not eating that. So I was creating it for people like that. There are meat eaters who, you know, they eat meat and they wouldn't mind trying plant-based alternatives. But if they can't understand what the ingredients are, they're like, I I'd rather just have my beef. So... Yeah, yeah, and I get that. People, Some people, you know, I think more and more so are hopping on like the, the vegan train or at least, you know, the plant-based alternative food. But some people might be a little skeptical to like try the walnut meat or really um, any vegan entree. So uh, how, what would you, how would you describe it in a way that like really, you know, brings the non-vegans in? <laughs> um, I would say it's a lot easier to... Imagine yourself eating it when you think about it as a familiar food. It's walnuts. There are not too many people who are unfamiliar with mm -hmm. walnuts. There are people that are unfamiliar with the fact that ground meat comes from various parts of an animal that may or may not be healthy. And it's not ground body parts. So just thinking that ground body parts, you don't question that, and walnuts, I mean, it's like, and then when I'm demoing and I'm presenting it on my page, I'm presenting it in a familiar way. Most people have had yeah. chili, tacos, burritos, pizza, Mexican mm -hmm. pizza. So you marry familiar foods with a very recognizable product, a whole food product like walnuts. Most people I find they are curious and they are very open to trying it because the marriage of all those familiar parts, they don't feel like they're eating anything that's much of a mystery. They're like, you can turn walnuts into a meat. I'm like, yep. You like walnuts? Yeah, I love walnuts. So. Yeah. 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 And I can say that from personal experience. Again, I, I had it in the pasta, I had it in the tacos and yeah, you season it up and all that stuff. And again, it has its own natural seasoning. But, you know, if you <laughs> customize it the way you want to, you really yeah. can't tell a difference. Like, I, I really yeah. couldn't. So, Thank yeah, I, I definitely enjoyed it. Um, so I, I know that you um, were able to get your product in, in stores, more um, specifically um, um, Union Kitchen. Again, not mm -hmm. to be confused with Union Market for all the DM right. readers out there. <laughs> Um, and so again, I know just getting any product into the store is quite the process. So what was that experience like for you? Um, for me, since I don't come from an entrepreneurial background or family, I looked into sort of a program being from Washington, DC, there's so many programs in our area and I'm used to as being a Washingtonian kind of taking advantage of what various programs have to offer. So I did some research found Union Kitchen and I was like looking, I was like, you know, if you don't take this opportunity, you know your disposition. This product will never see the light of day. So while some people can go the independent route, for me, I really needed that structure. I needed that acceleration. Um, I needed everything they had to offer. It's not for everybody, but it was the first step in getting my product on the shelves. And I know that if I had it done in another way, the, the progress, the process is very rigorous. And I think I probably would have given up at the FDA. <laughs> like just, I wouldn't have even been yeah. at the DCRA. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it was just, it was a lot. But um, I found the, the business accelerator. I pitched to them. They liked the idea. And it was off to the races after that. Yeah. And so I, I want to know, well, one, again, congratulations to you. That's uh, not an easy feat, not by any stretch. Um, again, on getting a product into a store. Um, is your product available for shipping? No, it oh. isn't. Right now, the logistics of a frozen product is challenging, particularly before you scale, and it's very expensive. So right now, I'm just in Union Kitchen stores. I just started pitching to local stores, and hopefully I want to get into at least a few health food stores in our area. But again, that is a very, very, very... I didn't know how challenging that was. I thought that would be the easy part. That's actually... Yeah. Like, 
my God, I got to give you a stem cell just to get on the show. So um, I'm working on that, but it's not, it's not shippable yet, but I would in the future, I'm going to have an online store, but just not right now. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Hey, you just got started because again, how many years in the making is this remind me? Um, I came up with the idea and I made my first one at Meat Taco in July, 2020, August, 2020, yeah. I believe around late August, I got into the accelerator and I didn't get on shelves until, um, the first week of June of this year. So it was long. <laughs> but you, that's long, but also kind of short in a way too. Really? <laughs> I mean, when, when you think about it, cause you know, I've, I've, you know, heard people, you know, it's like, it took like years and years. And when they say years, like maybe 10 years or so. So certainly I think you're like, you know, ahead of the pack in terms of time for the most right. part. So again, that's, that's great. Again, that you've been Thank able you. to um, kind of have that success and, and, and get it in stores. So again, big ups to you on that one. Thank um, you. You're welcome. So again, I know you offer the Tex-Mex flavor and um, mm -hmm. the, the spicy Tex-Mex, excuse me, and the Italian. Um, mm -hmm. Is there room for any other flavors at the moment? Or are you just still trying to like focus on getting those two together? So, I mean, as a creative, I'm always experimenting and coming up with like new ideas. And initially in the Union Kitchen Accelerator, they like for us to have three variations of our product. But making walnut meat is laborious and time consuming, even for anyone who's ever made it at home. That's why I package it yeah. for you guys. But um, yeah. I, I cut it down. I was doing plain Italian and spicy Tex-Mex. I decided on those two. And now I have three other flavors in my head that once I grow and scale and get the market feedback that I think will be really, really good. And there are three other um Cuisine flavors. I don't want to say. So I don't want to take my idea. Okay. No, no, no. We can, we can, we can have a, you know, leave it as, as a secret. But when you're ready to launch, promise you'll come back to the show and then you'll let everybody know <laughs> what those products are. I'm going to be the first person to try it out. <laughs> like, try this. Okay. AP. Hey, I, I'm game for that. So, yeah, definitely <laughs> hit me up. Um, so, you know what, in that same vein, are there any other like products like outside of walnut meat that you would want mm -hmm. to try? Um, I think so. When I came up with the idea of just naming it the walnut tree, something very simplistic, I knew intuitively that I wanted to branch out. I don't know if it's yeah. going to be a bed and breakfast, a cafe, a ghost kitchen, um, definitely a line of products. I don't know if you've ever watched um, uh, the foods that built America, but if you're into food, that's an awesome mm -hmm. show. I believe it's on PBS. It's a documentary about all the great um, brands that built America from Heinz to Subway to Pizza Hut to Stouffer's mm -hmm. everybody. Awesome. So when I was watching it before I launched, um, they talked about Bird's Eye and Stouffer's. And I was like, man, I would love to be like the Stouffer's of gourmet plant-based foods, but using walnut meat, mm -hmm. of course. So that's the next arm of the business. I really want to do prepared, healthy foods, like a whole lasagna, a whole spaghetti. So the people that don't want to cook the walnut meat, they already have my delicious entrees ready to go in the oven or the microwave. So. I know you said you've been um, plant-based, or you've had a plant-based diet for, I think, five years or so? Mm-hmm. Was it five years? Okay. So yeah. again, what are some of your most favorite dishes that you like to do? Again, with the, with the wal walnut meat. Again, I think we mentioned the pasta and the, and the tacos. Like, what else can you do for those who might be interested in trying it? Um, so it's literally a product with endless possibilities. And I chose those two flavors because American culture simply cannot live without Tex-Mex and Italian food. So right now I've been playing a lot with pizza and that's just over the last two days. I don't know if you saw my page. Mm -hmm. I made what mm -hmm. would be like a, the equivalent of a sausage pizza with the Italian. Um, before that, like at demos, I've been making chili. I've been making spaghetti and I just make a meat sauce and change it out with like rotini, fusilli, uh, ravioli, mm -hmm. linguine, tagliatelle, and just various pastas. Right. And uh, queso dip, I've been making a lot of. I had really a lot of fun making the Mexican pizza. I had never had a Mexican pizza until I made it with one of me. I was like, I see why people have been acting crazy over this thing during COVID. <laughs> and I think <Wait>. <laughs> it's delicious. Yeah. Yo, I'm curious, what did you put on your Mexican pizza? So I did um, the walnut meat, spicy Tex-Mex, of course. You have an anchovy uh -huh. sauce, you fry up the shells, and then you add the um, refried beans, pinto beans, 
vegan cheeses. I did a Monterey Jack and a cheddar. Um, I mean, it was just so good, y'all. Like, I ate that for like two weeks straight, too. Like, once I get one, of- <laughs> it's like, I want more, more, more. But it was really good. Um, my The first thing I'd ever made with walnut meat was burrito. I was a big burrito person for a long mm-hmm. time. And after giving up meat, you know, I would do veggie burritos, which were delicious. But sometimes as a non-meat eater, you just have this nostalgia that comes over you where you just want the familiar textures and flavors. Mm-hmm. And... Um, so yeah, burritos, meat sauce, lasagna. I pitched to Union Kitchen. I believe I made a lasagna, and I think that may have been what mm-hmm. got me in the door. But, uh, and a bolognese. That has been the most yes. interesting because when you think of bolognese, you know bolognese needs like three, four, five different meats from pancetta to yep. grilled to lamb, and to use just walnut meat and kick up the pl- flavor profile with like your sauce and wine, and it's amazing. So yeah, it's been fun. But those are my favorite. Yeah. Foods. Yeah, and I have. I've seen the bolognese on your page, and yeah, it looks absolutely wonderful. So I'll have to stop by and pick up some more of the product and, and make that um, for sure. <laughs> so let's see. What does success look like for Kiana and the walnut tree? Success. So my measure of success would be to not have to work full-time or part-time job and to retire mm-hmm. my parents. So with that said, unless there's a divine financial intervention, which is possible. I have a long ways to go before that happens. But oh. <laughs> that's what it looks like for me. Like, cause you know, I work, you know, as a, as a technical writer when I'm not doing the business and I would like to spend all of my time developing recipes mm-hmm. and creating a YouTube channel where I'm teaching people how to use the one to meet, how to cook and just living, you know, I want to segue it into a a lifestyle experience. It starts with walnut meat. It starts with the conscientiousness about what you put in your body. And then it extends into the conscientiousness about what you consume, what you watch, Mm -hmm. um, how you live in nature. And just, I envision a lifestyle experience um, coming from the walnut tree. Like I can see myself on my ranch with my horses, making walnut meat. You know, giving people tours of my home and my Billy Holiday records and just having a, a, a yeah. health and wellness experience um, with some black art and culture commingled in there. So, Oh, I love that. The whole vision. So you will reach it. Trust me, <laughs> you will. I think the fact that you're, again, already in store so early and again, selling the products here in the DMV. Like, I I can already see you expanding, again, not only just in terms of stores, but in terms of, like, products, too. So, yeah, looking forward to that. And I want to know when you start that YouTube channel, too, because I would love to, you know, just discover new ways to kind of, like, have your product. So that would be great, too. Absolutely. So is there anything else that you would want the people to know about you, the walnut tree, the products, anything? Um, I think the most important thing I would want people to know is that there was a lot of um, conscientiousness and mindfulness that went into creating the product. I was very, very committed to creating a product that I would eat and that I would eat regularly because I could not sell anything to anyone that I did not believe in. And I I couldn't consider Mm -hmm. a health food because we have enough delicious, palatable foods that have been altered that keep us in an addictive state and keep us unhealthy. So for me, I envisioned a product that was healthy, that tastes good, that was clean, and that would get people cooking. There's a reason I came out with the two ground meat alternatives because I wanted people to cook them. I didn't want to cook them for you. I wanted you to get in the kitchen. I wanted you to be accountable for Mm -hmm. what's on your plate. I wanted you to read my label and notice all the ingredients and the effort and the mindfulness that went into it. And when you give people knowledge and information coupled with, you know, recipes and food, it empowers them to make better decisions. I don't just want you to like delicious food. I want you to say, I want to like it, but I also want it to be healthy for me. And then that starts extending to, you know, the way you live your life, what you put on your skin, what you view. Mm -hmm. Like once you become mindful Mm -hmm. about what you put in your body three times a day, it's going to extend to other areas of your life. And I just envision people in the kitchen with their family, with their partners, with their friends, with their cats, <laughs> like me, just preparing your own food and becoming familiar with different tastes and textures that are also healthy for you. I love that. Just been a free spirit in, in every sense of the word. So, <laughs> <laughs> so now that we've, um, you know, learned a little bit more about you and the product, 
I want to play a little game with you. Are you down for that? <laughs> I am. I am. Okay. So the name of this game is. What is the name of this game? Uh oh. Yeah. A hard nut to crack. <laughs> no fun. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, we had to incorporate the uh, the walnut meat in there, that pun. So basically, this is just going to be a quick little game where I provide you like a series of different scenarios. And basically, you would t- tell me if the scenario will make Kiana crack, aka get mad, <laughs> or and how and tell us how, how would you respond? <laughs> okay. Okay. You ready? <laughs> yep. Okay. The first scenario is an elderly person skips you in the grocery store line. <laughs> How are you reacting, Kiana? Um, well, I would just let him skip me. I, <laughs> I so would. nice. I would, they're elderly. They may have dementia. Like, my grandmother has dementia, you know? So, like, it's okay. <laughs> you know what? That's real nice of you. <laughs> real grown up. You know what? <laughs> That's not the here nor there. That, you know, I feel like if they were to like, you know, look as though they needed to go ahead of me, I would let them, you know. <laughs> but um, on any given day, I'm trying to get my stuff and get out the store too. So, you know, we got to wait a Equal opportunity. Anybody can get it. Right. Yeah, like you know, <laughs> but again, oh that's what that's that's what makes you a better person than me. So, <laughs> okay, the next one. This one might not be as easy. So you're excited about a friend's upcoming birthday party, but then your friend says you aren't invited. <laughs> How are you reacting? Well, see. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna drive up to her house. I'm coming anyway. <laughs> see, see, see. No, I wouldn't do that. Mm. I, would, I would be curious and be like, okay, is there a reason? Is there someone there that you know I might not like? I would just mm. want to know the reason. You know. Like, there, there we go. See, see, you're using some logic behind it as opposed to like just like going there and getting. <laughs> <laughs> I, really I trust my okay. friends. They're discerning. So if she doesn't want me there. There's a very good reason. Okay. <laughs> oh, there we go. Okay. <laughs> Next, you are stuck behind a slow driver on an otherwise open road. Mm. How are you reacting? Road yeah. rage or not? <laughs> not road rage, but definitely putting that joint in third gear. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go. Go ahead, right on around them. <laughs> okay. Let's see. The next one. You are at a store waiting to be helped, but the cashiers are talking to each other and ignoring you, a.k.a. a regular trip to Walmart. So, <laughs> what are you doing? What am I doing? Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. I usually do that. Hey, excuse uh, me. <laughs> oh, that's so nice of you. <laughs> I mean, I feel like this, you know, when situations are already giving caustic and ridiculous, what you don't want to do is add caustic and ridiculous. You want to come diffusing, you know, so. And depending on the mood I am, I'm in, I'm usually kind of avoided. I'll just leave and go to another line or another store. I will leave the whole store before I can get into a confrontation. I love it. I don't want to deal with it. Don't let people disrupt your energy. I hear that. No, (laughs) ma'am. I mean, no, sir. Oh, no, no. You could. That, that was for the cashier. <laughs> like, <laughs> I got a vision of an experience in a Whole Foods. And I was just like, you really evolved, Kiana. I'm so proud right. of you. <laughs> See? See? Good. Okay. Last one. Someone tells you they don't like walnuts. What are you doing? What are you going to do? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't eat them plain and before I made this I hated them they were so bitter so I don't take things personally like people's opinions people's it's so subjective like I would Mm -hmm. be batshit crazy I didn't mean to curse (laughs) to be like you know like let it go (laughs) I'm sorry (laughs) (laughs) see and here I thought you were going to say you were just going to take your product and like shove it down the throat (laughs) <laughs> but 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 ask them. 
Uh-huh. What was that now? What was that? I relate to people that don't like walnuts because I truly did not like them. You know? Yeah. I was like, Let yeah. me make you a believer, you know? There you go. See, that's what I was like. Yeah, try in a different way. Again, with a little mm-hmm. bit of seasoning on it. And like, yeah. you know, let's see if you still have the same opinion after that. Absolutely. Yeah. But I love respecting people's like boundaries and opinion. Like, I don't like to run rough shot over people. It's not right. I'm here for that. You are right in my book, Kiana. See, <laughs> look, you responded to these uh, scenarios pretty well. So that tells me that you're like a well-tempered person. I am. It took a lot of God to get me here, but I'm here. <laughs> God, I'm here. I feel like and so I'm here and teleporting. I'm here now. Thank you, God. Right, right. Mm. And here to stay. Here to stay. <laughs> I'm telling you. Well, again, I do like to wrap things up and always, you know, leave viewers with a purpose aka the food for thought Mm -hmm. and so if you don't mind just sharing your food for thought it could be something that we talked about here based on this conversation or just you know covering your journey on you know this pathway to entrepreneurship so if you had to say something leave the viewers with something as a takeaway what would your food for thought be my food for thought would would be along the lines of discipline because that has been the most challenging concept and execution for me in my life and I'm a free spirit I love freedom I don't really like rules but I've learned over the past few years especially working in this business and creating this business is that discipline gives me the freedom that I want no one ever explained that to me growing up they didn't tell me that if you want freedom you need to be disciplined disciplined in your spending means that you have freedom to travel Discipline in your diet means that you have freedom to eat the things that you enjoy, to wear the clothes you like because you look good. You know, discipline gives you the freedom you want. So I would just tell people, be as disciplined as possible. It's definitely, uh, I think it should be a personal value. Oh, see, love that, love that. Well, with that being said, Kiana, I want to thank you for joining me today. Thank you. Um, you know, for all the viewers out there, I want them to go and like follow you. So please be sure to let them know all the places where they can find you. Okay. So I am on Instagram mostly at the Walnut Tree Nut Meat. I am on Twitter at the Walnut Tree Nut Meat and Facebook and TikTok. But my most active handle social media page is Instagram. And my website is the Walnut Tree Nut Meat. Dot com and my products are in all Union Kitchen stores in D.C. and Arlington. Perfect. Perfect. All right. So, yes, everyone, be sure to go check her out, especially if you're here in the DMV area or if you're just visiting. Be sure just to stop by Union Kitchen. And one day we're going to go ahead. She will be shipping soon. So just hold on. Hold on for that. It's <laughs> happening. Um, and let's see. Also, please be sure to like, comment and subscribe to my channel if you're interested in seeing more Um more interviews just like this one here and then also if you know any other small business owners in the food and beverage industry who would like to be featured here feel free just to contact me you know email me slide in my dms comment below let me know we'll be happy to have them on so with that being said all right everybody until next time ciao again kiana thank you so much for joining me today i appreciate it thank you this is awesome